Hello everybody, this is Jason Robinson from Illustration by Design, and it is about 10 o'clock Saturday evening, Eastern Standard Time. I want to welcome you to my live stream, my drawing live stream for tonight. Uh, as you saw, that was a short little commercial for Secret Comics Presents, the comic book that I illustrated a few months ago, and there are still copies available for sale. If you click the link down below in the description or up there pinned to the top of the chat, that'll take you to uh, where you can buy copies signed by myself and Nasra Body, the writer. And there are a limited number available, so I want to ask and encourage everybody to go check it out and uh, purchase a copy or 10. <laughs> um, but uh, you can also get copies with uh, a sketch of the character of your choice inside. So uh, just click the link below, and uh, that should take you to where you can purchase it. But tonight, I'm going to be doing another head sketch. I'm trying to do them a few, a few every week, and uh, you know, just to sort of work on my portrait skills and also, also work on my speed. I need to work on getting faster at drawing. So uh, this is a good exercise to do it. So. I'm going to be drawing Olivia Wilde tonight. She's, she's an actress who uh, used to be on House MD. Uh, she was on Tron Legacy. Uh, I think, what was the other one? One of the Western uh, Cowboys and Aliens, I think it's called. Uh, she was on that. She's been on a bunch of stuff. And uh, those are the things I mainly know her from. So I'll be drawing her tonight and uh, probably take about eh, two hours to do it. Um... Let's see. 
Kevin Cass says, slight robot voice audio. Um, let me turn down the background music, and hopefully that'll clear it up. Um, I'm standing right by the mic, so. But uh, hopefully that'll clear things up. He says, wild on 9 by 12. Uh, she'll be on uh, 6 by 9. So uh, same as the other ones. Um, I try to fit two headshots on a 9 by 12 page. So it'll be um, 6 by 9. Oh, and yeah, I'll, I'll be, like all the other ones, I'll be selling uh, you know, the, the drawing I do tonight for 60 bucks if you live in the United States, free shipping. Um, if you live outside the United States, it'd be 60 bucks plus shipping. So, um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys will like it. I'll try to take, yeah, it'll probably take about two hours to do. At least I'll limit my time to two hours because last time when I do this, I took my sweet time doing it and it, it was a six hour live stream, six hours. I cannot afford to spend six hours drawing this uh, picture. So, um, our Ar Arabic Donner says, nice Dale pick. Um, I think his name's Daryl. supposed to be Daryl. Um, but uh, <laughs> if it looks like some guy named Dale, then I'm in trouble. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's get started on Olivia Wilde. So uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. I will be here for at least the next two hours. And uh, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully it'll look like her. You guys will you guys will enjoy it. Wow. Ah, and Arabic says, yeah, Daryl. Okay, cool, cool. I drew the right person. I'm glad to glad to glad to know that I made him look recognizable. Oh, I forgot. I need reference for Olivia. Let's see here. Hopefully, I have, if I were smart, I will have already had her picture saved up on this tablet. Was I smart? No, I was not smart, which isn't a surprise. But uh, if you give me one second, I have the picture on my computer. I just need to transfer it to my tablet. So. I'll be right back. I mean, I'm still here, but I'll get started drawing in a few seconds. Let's see. Where is that picture? Okay, got it. All right. Only lost one person, by the way, <laughs> while I was looking for a picture. Okay, got the picture, so I can start drawing. Um, Arabic says, uh, that, that guy is a good actor. They should use him for Lord of the Rings. He looks like Ro, Ro Himir. Yeah, when, when I was drawing him, I, <laughs> I, I was... I got a little scared because I was starting to think that he, he was looking like, um, what's his name? Um, from Lord of the Rings. 
Boromir. Um, can't remember the actor's name though. It was um, I started in Sharp's Rifles on BBC, and he always dies whenever he's in a movie. <laughs> he always always ends up dead. Um, but I thought he looked like that actor. He was in Goldeneye, uh, James Bond movie, back in the '90s. So, Sean Bean, thank you, Jeff Pot, Sean Bean, yeah, Sean Bean. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he doesn't look like Olivia Wilde, but uh, I'm gonna start drawing her now. So, it'll be a nice change of pace from uh, from Daryl here. So the polar opposite in terms of looks. <laughs> Olivia Wilde is, is, has an interesting face. That, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to draw her. She, she's she's extremely attractive, but she has like a, it's almost like, I don't, I don't want to say evil, but she has like, <laughs> she has like a hot evil face, you know, almost like 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 um, Melissafent, except without the makeup. She's sort of a natural Melissafent, Melissafent without the horns. Wow, seven people are watching. I hope you all hit the like button. That would be awesome. Now, as usual, the, um, the main thing with the, for me doing likenesses is getting the proportions right, and that's usually the trickiest thing, because if I get them wrong, then the whole thing ends up looking off. Actually, I should probably stand up for this part so I can get a good, good look at both. Good look at the reference and the artwork and a good idea of the proportions. Yeah, because when I sit down, I, uh, my uh, perspective gets skewed, and I'll stand up and realize that the proportions were drawn a fair bit off. I mean, if you've ever been to a street painting festival and you've seen them... Um, doing those weird perspective drawings where you have to like stand a certain distance away in order to see the, it's, it's sort of a, this is Trump, Trump Loy, uh, fool of the eye. It's sort of like that, except unintentional <laughs> for me when I'm, when I'm uh, drawing sitting down and not getting a good view of uh, what I'm drawing. I need to stand up stand some distance away and uh, get a more, I guess, honest look at what I'm drawing. Hey, my sketchbook, how you doing? Good seeing you. What up with you? Move these out of way. Yeah, let me want definitely has an interesting face. Very, very strong jaw. <laughs> very sharp features. Uh, let's see. Um, my sketchbook says that Daryl from Walking Dead. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It says, okay, I guess seeing as how I was runner-up. Oh, yeah, with the boomerang box. If you guys missed it, John Dillard gave away the boomerang box, which was a box full of swag that he had sent to various comic creators on YouTube, including myself. And it got passed along. Uh, I don't know how many people got it. Probably 
I'll say 10 people, 10 or more different people got it. And each one threw in their, you know, their own books, original sketches, whatever, into this one box. And I think he first started out in, in April of last year. So for close to a year, it's been floating around North America. You know, I sent it up to Canada and then it came back to other people. And uh, Dillard finally got the box back, which packed full. I think it was 25 pounds worth of stuff inside. And um, and then he gave, gave away the box with all this cool signed stuff in it, comic books, um, original art, what have you, to one random person. And my sketchbook came in second place uh, in case the first place winner couldn't be reached. So... I understand your frustration. Actually, I thought about I thought about entering it, entering the window myself, but <laughs> yeah, I don't have an I don't, I don't have enough room for the stuff I own already, so I don't need more more stuff filling up my home. Gotta keep track of the time. And not obsessed so much over the artwork being perfect. Arabic says, hurry up and draw a zombie next to him. <laughs> I'll draw a zombie Olivia Wilde next to him. My sketchbook says I was going to, only going to keep a few things and sell what was worth, what was worth money. <laughs> Smart. Eagle Forty Eagle Forty Three says Australia doesn't even exist because the winner apparently lives in Australia, which is funny because uh, John Doe is going to have to. Cough up probably a hundred bucks to mail it to Australia. Let's see. Um, my sketchbook says I used to own a comic book stand that I ran out of a flea market. I looked it up. It's closer to 200 US. The most I saw it for was 250. What are you talking about? What was a 
200 US. Oh, to ship a 200 pound box to Perth. Oh, wow. 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 Well, hopefully it's not 25 pounds. Hopefully it's less than that. That's, I mean, that's ridiculous. When I shipped it to, uh, when I had the box, I shipped it to Canada. It cost me 70 bucks. Um, and I'm not, it's pro. Eh, I guess it was. It was a little more than half full then. I mean, it was pretty full. I don't know how many other people um, John sent it to after uh, after I mailed it off. So, and how much more stuff was shoved inside? She's got a big forehead, or a five head, as they say. She's got a five head. I was going by what Diller said on the stream. He said it's about 25 pounds. Yeah, I I don't know if he was exaggerating a little or not. I mean, it was heavy uh, for a uh, for a package. I don't know if again. I don't know what the final weight is. Um, I'm just going by when I had it. it, it what mm, I don't think it was 25 pounds at that time. But again, Rick Piper could have put you know a few bricks inside of it or something. So that's could have doubled the weight. My sketchbook says, I hope he gets some money. Perth won it fair and square. I do understand if shipping is way too much. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think Dillard, just based on the buckler sales, I think I think he'll be fine. I mean, the buckler. I think how much has the buckler pulled in so far? Thirteen thousand dollars or something. So. Okay, thirty thousand. Are you serious? My sketchbook hasn't pulled in that much, has it? It can't. It can't have. If it's pulled in thirty thousand dollars a buck, but I will be extremely shocked. I mean, I'll be very, I'll be very happy for him, but I mean, last time I looked, it was like twelve thousand, and it wasn't. It wasn't that long ago.
She kind of reminds me of um, her face. Well, again, because I, I mentioned Melissa Fan, but she does her face does remind me of Angel, Angelina Jolie. Is that she has a, a certain look? I don't know where it is. I think it's the eyes. She has like these really kind of piercing eyes. How? Um, oh, must okay, uh, okay, okay. Well, it, it, it is thirteen thousand. I mean, I would, I would have, I would have been really shocked. Uh, I would have wondered, it's like, what the heck did John do to make that much m m money in in such a short period of time? And how can I learn how to do it? <laughs> I, would been, I would have been emailing John and saying, how did you, how did you get $15,000 in like a month and a half? Tell me the truth. You can't have the truth. So, <sighs> people's faces are, are weird to me in a sense that I look at individual parts and they're not really that appealing, but if you put those weird pieces together, the face becomes extremely appealing. And I'm looking at Olivia Wilde's face right now. She's got like a crooked nose with a big bulbous tip. She has a huge jaw. But it all it all fits together so nicely that she's she's hot. So it's like it's like it's, it's definitely a case of the uh, the whole being greater than its parts. So what got you to do Life Like Portraits, asked my sketchbook. Uh, well, mainly for me, I mainly draw comic book, cartoony type stuff, you know. And I spent so, so many years, decades, drawing cartoons and comic books and copying from comic book artists and cartoonists that I've started to realize with my art that I was losing the ability to draw realistically and I don't I don't want that I mean I, I it, it was hurting my art by just using other artists as reference using you know copying John Byrne or whoever and uh and not drawing from life that was hurting my own art I, 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 my art was was look it's like maybe a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy i mean you take a great artist or a good artist like john byrne and he's already drawing a cartoon version of a person if i if my knowledge comes from copying him all i'm doing is making a poor version of john byrne so it's not even going to be as good as john Byrne. it's just going to be a cheap copy of it and that takes my art further away from realism or realistic or art artwork so i re i saw that was happening and i sort of forced myself to start copying out of magazines like actual people in magazines and stuff and then from there i just started to improve in general and uh this sort of this exercise here that I'm doing now is sort of a sketch a day exercise where I'm trying to, I'm not drawing every, these things every day, but every other day I'm trying, I'm starting to, I'm trying to draw a portrait every other day just to keep my drawing skills in tune, hone them. I want to get faster with drawing. Like I said yesterday, this thing, this drawing right here took me six hours because I was taking my own sweet time but i don't i don't want to take that long to draw a portrait and it's, it's not i mean you know it's not 
you know the best portrait but I want to be able to do a, a decent portrait of someone that looks pretty good in two hours I, and I, I know I I know I can I can do it but it's something that for me takes practice and so that's what that's what this is this is basically it's basically me practicing on a regular basis and trying to get better and faster with uh with drawing because i work as a, as a freelance commercial artist and there's two important things that go with being a, a commercial artist and that's being able to to draw but also being able to draw quickly and i can draw but tr my speed is what i need to improve on so that is what mainly what this is it's a speed exercise how fast can i draw well i can draw fast i can draw well can i draw well fast hmm okay that did make sense <laughs> i thought it made sense in my head but then it came out of, out of my mouth and i was just like did that make sense i guess it made sense so this is what this is this is a two-hour speed exercise for my drawing can i draw a credible likeness of someone that you know is well known in two hours maybe three hours some i mean i'll i'll, I'll i'm willing to go up to three hours for a drawing but uh you know i don't want to take much longer than that at least for the for this level of sketch oh my sketchbook says do speed and skill exercises that's what this is this is my speed and skill exercise in a nutshell um my sketchbook says uh oh wait I, I skipped a whole bunch oh my gosh i missed a whole bunch of my sketchbook stuff um uh, he says yeah she's got a case of man jaw yeah but it works for her it's, it's so weird it's like you, some some women they have man jaw and it's just like ooh, that does not work but um she her proportions her face it just works for her um she has serious lantern jaw but she's very, extremely attractive um my sketch was is funny because some artists that draw anatomically correct can't do good renditions of actual people like mike miller's book magnificent seven he was pretty bad at making them resemble a person fun book though yeah um well it's um i think it just depends on the on this on the style mike's style is very um it's very i want to say it's very comic book it is very comic book he's, he, he he draws he does do he does do cross hatching and mike can draw realistic people if he wants to but i think the look he was going for with the uh, magnificent seven didn't didn't quite make them as realistic as, as they could have but some of the some of course some of the portraits in, his, in that book were very good so I, I mean i can't and another thing mike is one of the fastest artists i've seen he draws extremely fast so for a book that he drew that quickly he did he did a, an excellent job in terms of do, doing uh those uh those portraits of, of people throughout the book so again it's, it's speed and and skill and finding it finding a happy medium between the two uh her eyes draw you in so much you don't really notice the jawline as much yeah that's true yeah her it's just yeah hope it's just overall very pretty picture with her head <laughs> It says you have the skills. It might be mental with you, bro. Your, your OCD might be holding your speed from coming out. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. I mean, I, 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 I know that I tend to get lost in my drawing when I'm drawing because I enjoy it and I'm having fun. So I tend to linger, and I don't focus on so much on speed or I, I just lose track of time and uh 
yeah and that's fine but again I, I just need to be mindful of it uh oh hold on uh, let's see are you guys still there Let's see. Let's make sure the stream is still working. Seems to be. Okay. Sorry. I noticed a hiccup with um for a second, so I wasn't sure. Let's see. Now I'm working with this, uh, what is this? This is a 0.5 Pentel mechanical pencil. It's a very thin lead and it's uh, pretty light. I'm using that just to establish the, uh, the positions of different parts of her face so that when I, <laughs> when I have to erase them, which I will obviously, because as I like to say, my drawings are 75% erasing, but when I do erase, I'm, I want to be able to do it fairly cleanly without having to make a mess of the paper. So, and then I'll go back and with my, this is a, I think it's like a B lead, maybe a 1B, 2B lead, and it's darker. So, I'll finish it off with that. My sketchbook says uh, he did do that book really fast. He has ability to make a made-up character look like a real person. It's just like the book. Could have done better with realistic looking characters. Yeah, maybe. But, um, you know, it's just that balance. Ah, drat. My eraser pooped. It pooped. It broke out. It broke. Let's see. Do I have a replacement eraser? Ah. I can't get this out. Let me... Hmm. Give me a second. Oops. That wasn't good. I know. I have a screw. I have a screw. And I screw this into I'm gonna I'm gonna MacGyver it. <laughs> Broken eraser stuck inside the eraser holder. And I'm trying to screw this into it and pull it out. See if that works. Actually. Let's see. These are all blunt tips, dag it. Give me a second. I poke a hole in here. And see if I can poke the screw through the hole. it in and it'll either break the eraser apart or give me enough pull to yank it out oh it worked yay is there any left in there nope cool i macgyvered it all right now let's see if i have, an, have a replacement eraser my luck i probably don't let's see let's see let's see let's see that's extra lead. Ah, yeah, we got one left. One eraser left. Toss that out. And I'll have to remember to go to Amazon and order some new ones. And squeeze this guy in here. There we go. Yay, it worked. It worked. My sketchbook says, uh, better character building would have been better as well. So it was a fun book. Yeah, it was, a, it was just a goofy political spoof. So, not, well, yeah, it was goofy. So, and that's fine. I don't, I, I don't expect 
Macbeth from a comic book, <laughs> especially one that deals with, uh, you know, sort of modern day uh, parodies of, of politicians. It's just for fun. Just for fun. And I enjoyed it quite a bit, actually. I'm, I'm just, ah, I, I know that Mike has a bunch of other books that are essentially done and uh but he's just waiting for the colorist to uh or waiting for a colorist he keeps on having problems with his colorist and they're the books are already drawn they're all written they're all inked they just don't haven't been colored and i'm like i <laughs> i wish he would just at least put out a pdf of the black and white books and and send those to the backers so we have we at least have the stories to enjoy until he can get his colorist situation dealt with, you know, but we'll still have the books in the meantime until he can manage to uh, get the finished printed books in our hands. Cause I'm still waiting for, uh, what are the, what are the three books? I'm waiting for Lone Star. Is it three or four? Lone Star, the last Lone Star issue, waiting for Monster Hunt 2 with Bigfoot Bill, and then the, um, there's, there's like a Nexus book that was, I guess, drawn by, by Chelsea, uh, Chelsea Shannon that, uh, that he also is, uh, is printing. And all three books are drawn. They're all finished except for the coloring. It's like, just, just send out PDFs of the black and white books. That's fine. I like black and white books, and you know, as long as the color books are coming, I don't think anyone's gonna care. We just want to read the stories. We just want good books. We just want. <laughs> Let's. So if you guys been watching the Boba Fett show on Disney Plus, I have not, but I've not been, I haven't, I have, I have not watched it, but I haven't been hearing good things about it. So I don't know if that's, uh, if I've just been reading sort of negative people or if the show actually isn't that good or, or what. So if any of you have seen the show, you let me know, because I'm curious to, to hear what you you all think of it. I have no idea how many episodes there are, but... Ah, oh, man. All right. I am I'm excited to draw this, but I am fighting myself mentally, <laughs> telling myself like quit quit screwing up, Jason. Let's see. All right. I mean, her mouth is in the right position, but her something's off. Okay, let me try working on some other parts of her face and see if it comes together. She's got these really pronounced cheekbones. I mean, this is a she has a very interesting face. <laughs> I keep saying that, but she does. I think it's her nose. I messed her up on her nose. Yeah, it's her nose. Her nose is too long. It looks it looks long in the reference, but I'm I'm definitely it's definitely off. I do a little rhinoplastic plastic on her. 
Let's see. Let me see if I can get her her schnoz situated. It's getting a little closer, the proportion, so that's good news. Is there any bad news? Bad news is already taking me 45 minutes to get to this point, but we keep on trucking. <laughs> Five people are left. Thank you for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. Hopefully this isn't too boring, but this is how the sausage is made. Thank you for taking some time out of your day or your evening to watch me draw. It's very encouraging. And I hope you stick around and subscribe for future live streams and videos. Like I said, I want to try to I want to do these about you know, three times a week. And you know, I also post unboxing videos and other stuff so subscribe it's free it costs not a penny to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications of future videos See that? I guess you can.
The chat has gone silent. Well, maybe my cell phone is just not showing everything. Hmm. Got those cat eyes. She would have been a good cat woman, actually. I'm a little surprised they never thought of hiring her to play that part. She definitely has the look of a cat woman. Speaking of which, that newest Batman, uh, newest news trailer for the Batman. Um, Robert Pattinson's Batman actually looks very good. Um, I mean, I'm still not excited about him as Batman, but the the directing makes him look really good. So he still looks scrawny as heck. They have, they have a shot in a in a trailer with uh with his shirt off, and <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm bigger than him. <laughs> And I'm not Batman. I am quite, I am quite far away from being Batman, and I'm bigger than the Batman in this movie, which is scary. But the but it looks it does look very good. Um, the the other than <laughs> other than Pattinson, the, the, it looks the, the the casting looks good. Um, and uh, it 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 looks like a a serious. Batman movie. Sort of the polar opposite of the Joel Schumacher films from the 90s, which is a good thing. So, yeah, I mean, I, I might I might see it when it comes out in theaters. Before, I, I was definitely not going to see it. But if it's as good as these latest trailers make it look, then it might be worth the time and possibly money to go see it in the theaters. Or it could just be a really good trailer to a really terrible film, which is also possible. That has happened to me before. 
I have seen many a terrible movie which had a great trailer that suckered me in. So, uh, Arabic is still here. He says, they should include Robin. I don't think they should include Robin unless they actually get a kid to play him. Um, I, I, I have no interest in seeing Batman and Robin where they're both about the same age. <laughs> I don't want to see an adult Robin with an adult Batman. The whole point of Batman and Robin is he's, he's, is Robin is his protege and he's a kid. You know, having Batman be 30 and Robin be 25, to me, does not work. It doesn't work. It's no, no bueno. No bueno. We need, I want to see, at the most, I want to see a 15-year-old Robin. Preferably, I want to see a 12-year-old Robin. I want to see Batman taking a kid, a 12 or 13-year-old kid, and turning him into, into a, a soldier that he sends out every night to fight mobsters. That's what I want to see. I want I want them to play it straight. I don't want them to to play for for chuckles or laughs or whatever. Um, I want I want to see how they deal with that situation because that, that to me that's that's one of the cooler, more interesting aspects of Batman and Robin. The fact that he's so far gone. He's not. He's not. I mean, he's not completely crazy, but he's so far gone that he's willing to toss basically a child into the blender of fighting hardcore criminals and psychopaths that would be cool and and to make it and and to have it so that it works so that robin actually is fighting these criminals and 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 is skilled enough to take them on i i would love to that would be so cool to me to see if they just play the whole batman and robin thing completely seriously or at least you know seriously as, as, as you can um, I think that would be a lot of fun. Oh boy, what did I run out of lead with this too? No, it's okay. It's, it's going. How much lead do I have? Oh, it's almost gone. Let me replace this too. Let's see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. There we go. I found it. I found it. Uh, there we go. My lead. Um, Arabic says, "Well, yeah, and Blue and Blue Beetle too." Yeah, well, they're they're making a Blue Beetle movie, or at least they're having him show up in one of these DC movies. Maybe is he going to show up in in the Flash? He might show up in the Flash. I'm not sure, but they've already hired a guy to play him. I, can't, I don't I don't know the actor's name, but Blue Beetle is coming to the uh, to the DC live action universe. So you shall get your wish very soon. Let's see. Hand that coordination. Can I get it in here? It's like threading a needle. It's like ah. It's like the hole is so tiny, or maybe. If I had some brains, I would have thought that, yes, you pull this out the, the top, and then you take the eraser out, and then you put it in the back, like that. See? It only took me about 10 minutes to figure that out. And then you put this back, boink, and it even has a little eraser on top. And then you uh, close the cap like that, and hopefully, hey, it works. Look at that. Like I actually use my brain this time. There we go. Good. Now where to put the cap? Uh, there we go. Will that fit? What the bag nab it? How do I get this back on? Or just pop it on? There we go. Just pop it on. Put it back in the case in the little container where I got it from. Look it in there, bing, bang, boom, done. All right, this is getting the proportions right. That's good. I got my new lead in, that's good. I'm gonna wipe my hands off so I don't smear lead all over the drawing. That would be bad. 
And uh, all right. But yeah, I mean, um, you know, like I said, unless, unless they have like a young Robin, I, you know, I think it's better if they just leave them out of the movies because it's, I think it's just kind of, I think it's goofier having an adult Robin than than uh, than having a uh, a young Robin because what what grown man would want to put on, the, you know, Robin's goofy costume and run run around with uh with Batman. I mean, maybe cosplayers, maybe comic book nerds would, um, but you know, most most grown men don't want to play sidekick to another guy. I, I wouldn't think. But we'll see. But yeah, I just I just heard that uh, Ben Affleck apparently hated being Batman or, or didn't like, you know, working on Justice League or he, or he's at least he's glad that he, he's no longer Batman, which is which is unfortunate because I thought that his I I wasn't crazy about him being picked as Batman, but I thought that they did a good job with him. Um, in uh. You know, Batman v Superman. That 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 one fight scene was so good. The warehouse fight scene. It was so good. It was like the quintessential Batman scene. I mean, that's like that's how Batman should be portrayed. <laughs> it was so cool. But. Oh well. Sad thing is, is that now we're left with, uh, you know, in terms of Batman, we're left with Robert Pattinson <laughs> as 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 the Batman, as the official Batman, with uh, Ben Affleck gone, and uh, or we have Michael Keaton as Old Man Batman, which you know, it's 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 it's, it's cool in in the nostalgia sense, you know. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is this it's the OG Batman from 1980, 1988 or 1989. When, when did it come out? I guess it came out in 1989. But um, you know, but I don't, I don't really want to see the adventures of, you know, 60 plus year old Batman. I want I want to see Batman in his prime, you know, but not Robert Pattinson. <laughs> You know, I don't, I don't, when I think of Batman, I don't think of Robert Pattinson as, as Bruce Wayne or Batman. It's a little too, a little too soft. <laughs> a little too emo for Batman.
All right. I'm back. I'm back. Oh. Hello. Hopefully there's someone still there. If so, welcome. <laughs> Sorry about that. My stream went down. I didn't even notice, and I was ranting for about four minutes, which thankfully you guys didn't hear, but um, yeah. Sorry, my computer's behind me, so I don't notice necessarily if it goes down. So if, if, the stream, if the stream goes out, type something in the chat and let me know because, like I said, my, my back is turned to the, to the live stream portion of the computer, the computer portion of the live stream. So I can't tell when things sort of wonk out. But I apologize for that. Let's see. My people are here. Thank you, everybody, for not abandoning me when my stream dropped out because of my sketchy internet connection. I appreciate it. What time is it? It's 11. It's 11 o'clock. 11.07. So... Starting to get there, starting to look like her, which is good. Let me, well, let me first keep standing up for a little, for a few minutes so I can get some of these, again, proportions down before I sit down, give my legs a break, and focus on some of these details and darkening up the picture so you guys can actually see it that would be nice how's that Okay. Oh. 
Oof, 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 oof. Slide my chair over. Make sure that. There we go. Better. Oof. All right. Now, get the picture up so I can see. That's good. Make sure. Oops. Now I can get going on here. So you guys have any um, thoughts on uh, people you may want me to draw in the future? Any preference? If you do, let me know in the chat or if you're watching this later post a comment down below and let me know who you think I should draw in the future I have a list but there are plenty of people that I either don't know or who I might know but just didn't think of so yeah just give me a give me some names and, uh, you know, if they're interesting looking enough, I will uh, I'll definitely consider them. I start drawing. Did I start drawing at 10? I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did.
Fits, that fits. I know this is looking like a coloring book, but <laughs> it'll come together. Um, hey, Jeff Potts, how you doing? Hey, Jeff Potts has put in the link to his sample uh, chapter from his, I guess, his upcoming book, The Reverend and the Tomb. He says he's gotten a, about 40 views in less than 48 hours. He says, which to me is astonishing. Well, everybody has the link now, so whether you're watching this live or later on, click the link and check out Jeff Potts' sample chapter. Let's get his views up. Let's get him over 100 views. That'd be awesome. Ah, narrated by Alpha Proto. Yes, I forgot.
All right. Uh. Cut once, measure twice, measure twice, cut once. I think that's the expression. Yeah, I'm cutting a lot now. I'm well, not cutting a lot, but I'm, I'm adjusting. I'm adjusting because I am, once again, standing up and seeing things that are out of proportion and continuing with the endless changes. Well, not endless, but making some changes. Gotta raise her forehead a little. Okay. Let's 
Okay, it's getting there. some water. Ah. I'm going to start diving into the details and hopefully <laughs> I won't be kicking myself and having to erase a whole bunch of stuff as I get it done. Let me move the lamp over a little so I can see. Hopefully, you guys can still see as well. is here. How you doing, Vic? Vic says nice. Good. I'm glad you like it. It is working on this for about an hour and a half. I'm hoping that hoping that it will not take me forever to finish this. I would like it to be as close to two hours as possible. At this point, it looks like it's going to go over two hours, but I'll try to keep it as close to that mark as I can. Thank you. 
It says, yeah, dude, you make Olivia Wilde look good. Oh, thanks. I'm trying. I mean, she, she obviously does look good. I'm just trying to do her justice. That's, that is my problem, my, uh, my concern. Trying to make these people look like they really do in as short of amount of time as possible. What is easier, guys or ga or girls? Um, I would say interesting people, interesting looking people are easier. It's not really guys or girls. It's uh, it's how they look. If they have interesting features, um, I would say that that uh, that beautiful people are hardest. Men and women, generally women are harder for me, um, but beautiful women are probably the hardest just because there's nothing when I say beautiful I mean beautiful without any odd features like like uh, Olivia Wilde has a lot of odd, odd features to my mind she has a crooked nose she has a weird shaped nose she has a huge jaw and her face is like tiny compared to her head she has like a tiny face with a huge head so to me that makes her interesting and therefore easy to draw in a sense um relatively but i was drawing what was i drawing a few days ago i was drawing uh, karen gillen from uh doctor who and guardians of the galaxy redhead she's also in jumanji movies i was struggling with her for some reason and I think it was because she doesn't have really unusual features. I mean, she's beautiful, but she doesn't have really unusual features th that I could, like, really latch onto. So I was, like, struggling trying to make her look like her um, because her, fe her features are so regular. Right? When I say regular, I mean they're so well-proportioned, her eyes, her nose, her mouth. In relation to each other in relation to her whole head that when something was when i drew something out of proportion it was obvious and it was hard for me to for me as the artist to, to see her see that drawing as karen gillen it was i knew something was off and i couldn't get it, it took a while with with olivia wilde it's it's easier because she has these cat she has those unique cat eyes she has you know, unique features that I can look at her and say, okay, I've got what I need to get down for her to look like Olivia Wilde. I mean, it's not going to be, this isn't going to be a perfect drawing, but obviously, I mean, it's just, it's a drawing, but there'll be enough here so that you could look at her and say, okay, yeah, that looks, that looks 80% like Olivia Wilde. You know, I can, you know, I see her at, that's Olivia Wilde, more or less. Ah, let's see. Vic says, I, I say guys because the actor probably wouldn't like this picture of him. He looks like drunk Nick Nolte or something. Girls are harder to find to make flattering. Um, girls are harder to look flattering, I guess, yeah. But this the guy does, he looks like, he, he looks like drunk Nick Nolte. And that's what he looks like. I mean, I... Maybe he doesn't, maybe he may not like that fact, but he, he does, so. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but he was he was kind of hard to draw, too. Um, and I, I think for me, it was, while I was drawing him, I kept on seeing other actors in his face when I was drawing him. So I, I would get to a certain point and think, that looks like X, Y, or Z instead of the actor I was actually drawing, so. Let me see. Uh, 
Now, let me get these eyes done. trying to get close to the paper without hitting the camera. Rick says, oh yeah, you have to try to shape all that to make her look pretty. I'm doing a drawing for my friend. Hopefully I finish it and he likes it. I'm trying to make a YouTube thumbnail or meme. Uh, I see Nick Diaz. I don't know who Nick Diaz is. What what was his name in Blade 2? Oh yeah, it's um Yeah, it's the same guy from Blade 2. It's um And he's on Walking Dead. Um Oh my gosh. What is his name? It's not Nick. It's um Nathan. No. Can't remember his name. He plays he plays Daryl on The Walking Dead. So if you look <laughs> look at my last video, you'll see his name on there. I can't remember it off the top of my head. I don't watch Walking Dead, so. Uh, Vic says, uh, you seen Lon Havery channel sketch? No, I've not. I don't, I've, I've never heard of Lon, Lon Havery. I don't know who that is. I guess he's not, I guess he's an artist, a sketch artist, but I'm not familiar with him.
Whoa. Oh, ah, ah. Sorry. Dropping stuff. Ah. Let's see. Hold on one second. Uh, you listened to Jeff Potts' video? No. I've, I haven't been out most of the day, so I'll check it out later. Experience here. How you doing? Um, Vic says, "How close do you think we are to virtual reality games?" Well, we already have them. I mean, they have the those little headsets that you put on your put on your skull, and then you're in VR mode. And so, I would say we're right <laughs> we're at that point right now. Comic Spare says, uh, "Why does Living Wild look like the guy from Walking Dead?" Um, she had a bad night. This is her. This is Olivia Wilde before she started dating uh, 
uh, Harry Styles. This is her after st she started dating Harry Styles. So, I would blame Harry Styles. Uh, Vic says, damn boy, she's coming out pretty. Well, good. I'm, that's that's the goal. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll it'll continue. Um, Vic says, oh, look at those eyes. Trying to get them right. Um, oh, wow, you made it then, Jim, Jiminy. VR games in your time. Cool. Yes, hashtag blame Harry. I do. When I found out they were, that, that she had left Jason Sudeikis for Harry Styles, I was like, oh, why? Why? <laughs> I, I, I mean, she has like, does she have like two or three kids with Jason Sudeikis? Why would you leave your family for Harry Styles of all people? It's like leaving leaving your family for Pete, Pete Davidson. I don't I don't understand why. I, I I chalk it up to maybe massive insecurity on the part of these women that they would lower themselves to <laughs> just ruining their their relationship for like the biggest dirt bags in uh, maybe not the. They're not the biggest dirt bags, but some of the more obvious dirt bags in entertainment. <laughs> Harry Styles. Yeah. So far, the intro of Jeff, of Jeff, Jeff's book looks kind of reminds me of Nas. Oh, okay, you're joking. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was going to say, what? I seriously doubt that. I feel that feeling that Jeff Potts might just be a slightly better and more experienced writer than Noster. Although Noster does have experience. His I think Noster's writing has there's a lot of improvement in Noster's future. I will say that. I look forward to reading, seeing Nasser's, uh, what Nasser puts out in, say, 10 years, 10, 15 years. It's going to, it will, I, I think it, it will be pretty impressive. Ah, oh, shoot. Why, why did I do that? I got my blanket caught in the wheels of my chair, and now it's there. Run out. Thank you. Oh. It's like the blanket's not even six months old. Don't ruin it. I think my yeah, you know, my wife got it for me for my birthday. I don't want to ruin my birthday blanket. <laughs> Jeff Potts writes what am comma I bitter about. I don't know what that means. Is that a joke? No, I heard my name and someone mentioned the word bitter. Maybe I maybe I said maybe you heard I think I said better, not bitter. We were talking about uh I think Vic said that uh that he read your intro and it reminded him of Nasser. I said I said I think Jeff Potts is, is quite a bit better than Nasser, not bitter. 
better with an E. Um, <laughs> Jeff Price says, actually, you're the only one who, you're the only someone who can mention anything. That's true. I'm, I'm reading everybody's uh, chat. So someone said it. It was me. But yeah, I said, I said uh, better, not bitter. Um, Vic says, I, can't, I couldn't believe how good Secret Comics was written. Unbelievable how something like that was actually produced. Okay, well, thanks. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. Um, but I think I think Nasser will do much better, much better in the future. And like, yeah, like I said, in ten years, I think I think he'll uh, he'll be quite surprising on how far he's come. So. Give Nasser time. Give Nasser time. Comics Bear says, Bear is bitter at hashtag kick Nasser. You're, you're bitter towards a kick Nasser movement? Comics Bear should never be bitter about the kick Nasser movement. It was one sentence a page. Oh, <laughs> that, yeah, that's that's. Nasser needs to. He needs to be more. It, it, and actually, it was it was better with Secret Comics Presents than it was with his his previous book, Asile. That book, I mean, again, I, I like Nasser, but he needs to. Um, he needs to work on filling out. verbally a comic book i mean comic books are supposed to be you know not just pictures i mean it has to be it has to be text to give the pictures context so he needs to uh he needs to work on that the, the his comics tend to be very sparse dialogue wise and uh i think if he Gave gave his books a proper amount of uh, textual filler, in a sense. They would be they be they'd be much better. Why don't you play just video so you can so you can hear it while drawing? Uh, that's an idea. Let me let me let me try that. You guys want to hear Jeff's? Uh, you want to hear Jeff's story? Eric Hawkins says, "I love the art and secret comics presents." That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> well, Vic says yes. It was Vic's suggestion. Um, Jeff, you want me to play your story for people to hear? If I can figure it out, if I can manage it, if I don't screw it up, I'm happy to do it. So, they give me something to listen to while I. While I draw. Did Jeff Potts leave? Jeff Potts says yes. Okay, hold on. I'll put the put the funky music. Well, actually, I'll put the link back up uh, uh, if you can, Jeff, in the chat, so I can so I can find it. And then I'll I'll share it with the audience, and we can all listen together. We can all listen to Alpha Proto reading Jeff Potts sample story while I draw. It'll be like middle it'll be like Middle Earth story time, except without Edwin Boyette. We'll see if Alpha Proto is half the narrator that, that uh Edwin Boyette is. So Jeff you can post if you can post the link in the uh, in the chat I would appreciate it. And then I will I will share it for everyone.
Oh, there it is. Cool. Pull that. Okay, everybody ready? I'm going to hit play, and we'll all listen to, uh, actually, let me put my headphones on so I can hear it without any possible echoes from uh, my mic. Give me a second. We're going to be listening to uh, Jeff Potts um, sample chapter from his uh, his new book, and it is going to be narrated by Alpha Proto. So I'm going to hit play. We can all listen, and I'll I'll continue drawing while we listen. Okay, it's about 15 minutes long, so not too long. And let me know if you cannot hear it. If you can't hear it, let me know. We can play it out. The Lore Forge. Can you hear it? Let me know in the chat if you can hear it. The Revenant and the Tomb by Herman P. Hunter. Chapter 1. Dangerous deed laying down gold in a place such as this, Drem said as he set his flagon back on the tavern table. Halfway through draining the beer from his mug, a single talon bounced and banged on the worn wood of the rude table. It was a long bar of gold as thick and as long as a man's index finger. A precious thing, it shimmered in the light of a single tallow candle. Finally coming to rest on the worn and stained wood of the table, it lay exposed to the ready glare of greedy eyes. Dram's cautious stare briefly fixed on the golden token, then quickly scanned the room. Extending his hand, he reached out and covered the prize before scooping it under his palm. Perhaps you should check if it's truly gold, said Hal Cedric, his keen gray eyes fixed on the older man. The pair couldn't be more unlike. Youth contrasted with wizened age. Hal Cedric stood tall and proud, a knapsack slung over one shoulder, tight flaxen curls cut trim atop a fair face barely touched by age. His clothes were stained from the road, and the filth he wore was a testament as to how far he had come to meet the elder guide. Mud stained his trousers and the white sleeves of his shirt, and spattered his well-worn leather vest that had seen more than its fair share of the world. Later, sit, Dram said, sitting up and pointing to a nearby chair with his clenched fist. A hard man with a hard face. His features were weathered by the elements and long years of hard living. 
running from the left edge of his brow, a scar wound down and around his cheek, following the line of his jaw. The bulge of the scar parted the hairs of his beard, which came neatly to a point under his chin. Wool and leather made up most of his garb, durable but weather-worn, hiding a shoddy linen shirt beneath. A long, dark gray mane was pulled back and woven into a long braid that ran down the length of his back. Halsedrick had unloaded his burden as Dram quickly slid his prize into an inner pocket of his woolen vest. All the while, he eyed the patrons who stewed and simmered in the darkened expanse of the room. This was indeed a rough place, smoke-filled, greasy, and dim. The low rumble of quiet conversation could be heard in the shadows. With a low dying fire in the distant hearth, the light from cheap candles in their rude holders wasn't enough to give the place life. Perhaps that was by design. For Halsedrick, the smell was enough for him. Stale beer, soured wine, hints of urine, vomit, and worse lingered like a wretched miasma around him. The greasy smoke of the burning tallow stained the rafters. This was an old place where many generations of men came and schemed terrible schemes, given anonymity by the eternal dusk that lived within the walls. This certainly wasn't the first tavern Halsedrick had visited, for he had seen many such places in his time. Large, timber-framed structures whose walls were made of tree trunks. Logs that were stripped and notched, the gaps on the seams packed with moss and clay. Yet of all the seedy establishments he found himself in, this place held a distinct rank as one of the most blighted. Taking up his flagon again, Dram leaned back in his chair, the wood creaking in reply. He held it in the air for a moment before taking a swift drink and cradling the wooden mug in his hands. Aye, you got my attention, his voice ground in his throat, hinting of his advanced age and habitual use of a pipe. I suspect I already know what you're going to ask of me. I need a guide, answered Halsedrick. Aye, I know these parts well. Might I ask where you're going? Settling into what little comfort his chair provided, Halsedrick continued his keen-eyed stare. They say you know the lands of the Horn of Torgiv well. Coy, Dram stared into the remaining beer of his flagon. The candlelight flickered a bit casting shadows on the lines of his face. I, he said with a subtle nod. I need someone who can lead us to the southern slope. Dram let loose a discontented sigh. The interest that his face once showed diminished. Is there a problem? said Halsedrick. There was a bland quality to his expression, like that of an innocent boy, unaware of the world and its dangers. Yet there was also confidence that shone through. The confidence of a man who had known peril and was unafraid. Have you any idea what lingers there, friend? Quick and cynical, Dram's glance, though brief, spoke volumes. This was not the first time someone had asked him for such a service, much to their eventual regret. I am aware of the peril. Are you? Tell me, son, what you know of them lands. With a slight grin, Halsedrick replied. I know that you are one of the few who dare venture there. All the others I asked politely declined. Aye. So you will accept? Lazily placing his mug back on the table, Dram answered. See here, friend. If in you pay up front, I'll take you as far as I deem wise. I may be old. I ain't no fool. Leaning forward and setting his arms on the table, he lowered his voice and spoke with a frankness that was both bold and dismissive. Them lands ain't for the faint of heart. Yuck up there, and worse. Yuck do not concern me. They should. Dram answered with a hard stare. But they ain't the only peril you'll face. This is none of your concern. Lifting up slightly, Dram rubbed his face with his hands. Pardon frustration and pardon disgust. You ain't the first, you know. You will be well paid. Pay ain't got nothing to do with it. I, I've made good coin of them fools coming up here and asking the same as you. And you refuse them? A man's got to make a living. Halsedrick's gaze hardened. And yet, knowing what you know, you took them. 
Does that not trouble you? I sleeps well if and that's what you mean. How then? Incredulous, Dram's irritation at Halsedrick's persistent questioning started to show on his face. His eyes looked away and with a disgruntled sigh he spoke. Cause of each of them I says the same, but I says the same as I say to you. Which is? That gold is gold, and being a tracker is my trade, I do it well. Many I've took to the land of the Aranok, and of them bloody and rent they returned. If then they return at all. Eyes shifting away for a moment, Halsedrick considered the warning of the guide. Fair enough, your concern is noted. Son, heed my words, Dram said, his words pleading, though his tone and expression were far from it. They'll all go, bold and boasting, Cedric Strongarm, Thanos the Mighty Blade, some for glory, most for riches. What they find is ruin and death, every one, no exception, and you will be no different. Your warnings are well heeded, Hal Cedric said, his former composure returning to his face. I assure you we seek neither glory nor riches. His eyes returned downward for a moment, before looking up once more. Have you seen it? Brows furrowed. Dram asks sharply. Seen what? The entrance. Slowly, Dram sat up, a sort of stunned confusion washing over him. You know of it? With a slow, silent nod, Halsedrick answered. Dram had to think for a moment before answering. In the distance... The legs of a bench scraped against the wooden floor, accompanied by soft footfalls that disappeared in the distance. This got the old guide's attention, and his eyes sought the darkened forms that lay beyond Halsedrick. Aye, Dram answered. Once, when I dared venture close. And what lie within? Shaking his head in reply, Dram answered. Don't know, don't care. Those who did venture in, what did they speak of? Ghosts, some said. Others spoke of demons. One claimed a fell voice in the dark. All of them half mad. When can we depart? The sudden change in conversation broke the grim spell that lay on the aged guide. He looked confused for a moment, and then his head turned to his beer. Taking up the flagon, he leaned back in his chair once more and stretched out his legs. He pondered the question for a moment, cradling his flagon in both hands. Two days to gather provisions and then we can be off. I'll need payment ere we depart. How much? How many are you? Make plans for four, though there are only three of us, said Hal Cedric. We have made camp just north of the village. Find us there on the morrow when you will be paid. Twelve silver anders for supplies, ten gold anders for the journey. Half now, half when we make final camp. A fair price, Hal Cedric said as he stuck out his hand. Dram looked at the gesture for a moment and paused, obviously pondering the wisdom of the agreement. With reluctance, he set his flagon on the table once more, leaned forward in his chair, and grasped Hal Cedric's hand. The sheer gesture of a pact that had been sealed. Dram offered a queer look when he felt the soft, supple flesh of his client's hands. These are not the hands of an adventurer. Oh? Releasing his grip, Dram took up his flagon again and leaned back in his chair. Your hands feel like those of a cat maiden or a silk-swaddled nobleman's son. Cocking an eyebrow, Halsedrick let his hand fall. Oh? Dram shrugged as he took a quick sip of his beer. Well, we'll know your measure in due time. How so? Did I not say dropping gold in a place like this was an ill thought? With a knowing smile, Halsedrick closed his eyes and returned a slow nod. Ah, you refer to the five men seated behind us? Yes, I saw them as I entered. Did you now? There are three sitting there now, yes? Leaning his head to one side, Dram squinted his eyes, probed the dim light and haze beyond them. Aye. That means two are waiting me outside, with two to follow, and a third as a runner should I decide to slip out the back. His brows lifting in surprise, Dram answered with a single, Aye. I assure you they will not be a problem. 
I am not so much a fool as to enter this place with a full purse. As you say, son. And one other thing, Hal Cedric said, as his grin faded and his keen, terrible eyes returned. I am not your son. You look mighty young. Reaching down and picking up his pack, Hal Cedric interrupted. Of one thing I can assure you, appearances can be quite deceiving. We shall see, eh? Legs scraped against the filthy wooden floor as Hal Cedric stood from his chair, the back of his knees pushing the seat away. Slinging the strap of his pack over his shoulder, he said softly, Yes, we shall. With a shallow bow, he added, Good evening to you, sir. See you on the morrow. Lifting his mug in reply, a disbelieving smile graced the face of the guide beneath the twisted and uneven hair that sprung from his face. Turning sharply, Halsedrick disappeared into the drear of the tavern, weaving his way through the benches, tables, and chairs that seemed to haphazardly clutter the space. Making his way straight to the main door, he stopped as he passed the trio. They were sitting on benches that flanked the long table, two on one side and one on the opposing bench. They were a rough and motley crew. He faced the men as a hush suddenly fell over the dimly lit room. Lean faces, unshaven, with dark long hair and hungry eyes stared back at him. The expressions they held belied clear surprise by Halsedrick's actions. Halsedrick smiled and bowed slow and shallow. Gentlemen, he said in a stately voice, leaving the trio confused. Facing the door once more, he continued his trek to the exit. Fool. Dram muttered to himself as he quickly drained the remains of his flagon. With a satisfied grunt, he held the empty mug up high and yelled, End keep! Another beer now, curse you! Oh, that's the end. Hold on. Okay, that was it. Let me stop screen. Oh, wow! Yeah, that was that was pretty dang awesome, Jeff Potts. That was very, 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 very good. One, I was extremely shocked by, uh, actually, let me t take my headphones off. Ah. Bop, 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 bop. <sighs> Turn this off. Turn that off. Yeah, I was going to say, I was extremely shocked by how good Alpha Proto's narration was. Wow, that was pro level. I mean, he, he was as good as Edwin Boyette. Um really 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 good really good um let's see remove bot and oh thank you jet bot jet bots hid the bot uh narration was fantastic the story was equally fantastic extreme really good story i mean i i want i i thought about commenting as it was going but i thought it's because I, I listen to, like, uh, what, what are they called? Uh, not reviews, but when uh, when they when when people give uh, uh, reactions, reaction videos and stuff on YouTube, and I hate it when people interrupt what the re react when they start talking. I mean, it's fine that if they react and go, oh wow, or, or, or whatever. But when they start talking and commenting on the things they're watching in the middle of what they're reacting to i hate it because i can't enjoy what's going on i can't hear it myself so i figured i'll just shut up let people enjoy jeff Potts' story and then i'll comment about it afterwards which i'm doing now but no it's the story was really good really really good i i really enjoyed it i mean how much are you finished with the whole thing with the whole story because i mean i would definitely i mean i don't know if it's for sale or whatever i definitely read that um it's really good i mean this just that one chapter that sample chapter was very good um jeff potts uh says yeah off, off proto po posted a, an advert in mike miller's discord and listened to his sample i can't believe that guy doesn't get more voice acting work i had no idea that he did it 
So he should definitely promote himself as a. I mean, if, even if he just does those um, those short trailers for for comic book um, crowdfunding books, you know, I mean, I, I would think everyone would would snap him up or, or try to get him to to do voiceovers for for their crowdfunded books. I mean. Um, Jeff Ross says the book is done. I'll, it'll be for sale at the beginning of March. Well, I, I will be happy to, you know, check it out and you can promote it on my channel whenever you want or whatever. You know, I don't know, I don't know where you're selling it, Amazon or what, or, or your own website or whatever, but, uh, it looks, it, I mean, it's, it, <laughs> it looks, it sounds really good. That one chapter alone, uh, basically sold me on it. So, um, yeah, great job. I, I look forward to uh, to seeing the rest of it. So, and uh, what's what's the name of it again? Uh, I mean, I, I I forgot, but um, but yeah, it looks it looks really good. Thank you to Vic for suggesting that that I play it on on the stream because I didn't even think about that. So, thank you, Vic. Good job, and uh, yeah, excellent job to, uh, to uh, Jeff Poss and, and Alpha Proto. Very very cool. Actually, you guys should, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you consider crowdfunding it. Uh, I mean, if you crowdfunded it and then just did like that voiceover chapter as the uh, as the trailer, I think you get a lot of attention. <laughs> hey, Gary Shipman is here. Gary Shipman. My goodness, I am honored. Gary Shipman is one of the coolest, bestest artists on uh on youtube um hope you're doing well gary wow if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel gary shipman that would be fantastic i will be bragging to all my friends <laughs> hope you're having a happy new year gary and things are going well for you are you still working on titan or is that finished I don't know. I don't know how many uh, how many issues of that book you were. Yeah, I don't know if it was an ongoing book or if it was a limited series or what. So, but if, you guys who don't who may not know who Gary is Gary is a really great artist, great um, storyteller. He uh, he did a uh, extended extensive series called Packins Land. It was like a big tome like that thick um and uh he, he he sold uh crowdfunded copies of the big graphic novel um on uh indiegogo now he's working on another book or, or maybe he's finished it another series called titan mouse of might and it's sort of a spinoff of, of packens land and it's is how would i describe it? it's like a it's like a batman um takeoff starring a mouse like a little mouse uh, who's been transported into our universe. He's a talking mouse, wears a sort of Batman-like suit, and it looks really cool. I got, I got, I think the first, I think the first two or three issues? I can't remember. I, I know I bought it when he had, when he advertised on, on, uh, on Indiegogo. So, yes, Jeff Potts says, Gary is the bestest, most famous artist out there. That is true. Uh, Vic says, let me write a comment for you, Jiminy. <laughs> um, we'll see. Um, oh, Gary says, uh, I'm working on the color Titan now. Okay, cool. Hey, I got the uh, black and white version, so which was very cool. So if you guys haven't already, you should go subscribe to Gary Shipman's uh, YouTube channel. Great artist. He live streams on a regular basis drawing his book uh titan live on the air so it's pretty neat it's pretty neat to see so are you still doing nfts gary because i i'm, I'm still trying to <laughs> i'm one of those guys who like is still trying to figure out what 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 it's all about and i know i should i should 
have a better idea um, because Mike has done so much stuff on it. But I, I, for me, it's just a learning learning curve for me. Is uh, I need to get over that hump. So I know you you were doing uh, you started doing it, and then I, I just sort of lost track of of everyone who was sort of working in, in NFT. So I'm kind of behind. It's Batmouse. Yeah, Batmouse. Batmouse is cool, man. I one of my favorite cartoons when I, when I was a kid was uh I don't know, <laughs> you guys may not remember. Uh it was a it was it was a creation by it was created by Bob Kane who created Batman, but it was called Courageous Cat and Minute Mouse. And it was basically a cat and a mouse who uh who were basically Batman and Robin. And it was a cartoon. It was on um I'm trying to remember. It was on it was like a sub cartoon to another to a more popular cartoon series. I'm trying to remember the cartoon series they showed it on, but it was so funny because it's bit you know they were they had the, they had like the the cat cave they had the cat mobile, um, you know they fought like a the main bad guy was like a was a villainous frog, and it was uh, a <laughs> oh no as a kid I I just I just loved it because it was like oh it's like Batman but with a cat. <laughs> Oh, Gary Shimmer says I still have some NFTs out to come. To, yeah, I still have I still have some NFTs still to come out. Cool, cool, cool. Vic says I guess the best way to do it is if you could find someone who wanted you to do the art for them. I, I think that's what Siege and Zach Bradley are doing. Let's face it, they aren't. What? You gotta be kidding me. Zach Bradley and Siege are awesome artists. They're they're <laughs> they're really good. I, I I mean Siege's stuff is, I mean it's 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 kind kind of weird to um you know to my eyes i mean it's, it's not it's not something what she draws is not something that i would draw but it's so well done i mean i saw her drawing from uh i guess it was drawn and quartered this past week on on wednesday uh for uh what was it uh jujitsu kaizu is that the name is that the name of the anime um and she'd never even heard of it before but her drawing was so good. It was so cool. I, and I was like, whoa. I mean, you, for someone who's never even heard of this cartoon before, you, like, just knocked it out of the park. It was so well done. So, uh, no, I mean, those, those guys are great. Zach Bradley is a phenomenal artist. They're both really good. So, uh, okay, he was joking. Um, Jeff Potts says, Zach has his own NFT line. He's making bank. I'm not surprised. I mean, he's... he's you guys are really good artists. I I need to I need to learn how all that stuff works because I'm I know I am missing out and I am being stupid by not taking the time to learn it. Uh, wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> but I don't have to repeat my, my I don't have to keep repeating my, my my mistakes by failing to to jump into this stuff. You just have to make the time to do it. So, but I think it, I think it requires a lot of uh, a lot of time and effort in order to really sort of get a handle on on NFTs. That's that's the impression I get anyway, just based on all the stuff Mike's doing. It's just like man, it's like taking up all this time. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Hitting the camera yet again with my head. Let's see. Ah, oh, let's see. Um, Jeff Potts says, see, she's also posting her own line. And from what I hear, they're selling well. That's cool. That's great. 
Brian Shears art is picking up too. Everybody's art is picking up. I need to <laughs> I need to work on mine. Uh, Zach has helped a lot of guys getting into NFTs. Um, Comics Bear says one draw eight bit monkey. Two sell on the internet. Three <laughs> question 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 mark. Four profit. <laughs> Gary Shipman says I would say be very careful with moving into the NFT world. Yeah, I mean that, that's the thing. I'm just like I don't mm. I don't like I said. It's something that I think you need to really be able to dive into and understand, at least I do, everything before jumping into it because I something something about it I don't <laughs> I don't trust. <laughs> um, so it seems it seems a little unstable. Uh, yeah, unstable in a sense. I don't, I can't afford to jump into something that does not essentially guarantee will be profitable for me and devoting a lot of my time to. I, I don't mind devoting some time to something like that, but, you know, if I have to invest a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money for something that may not end up being profitable, then I probably would shy away from it. But again, I don't know that much about it. So Gary Schumer says, talk to Zach. I should. I should probably talk to Zach and get his thoughts and advice on the matter good advice gary shipman good advice i think gary's threatening you hmm that could be it um yeah jeff Potts says duck to naples making a truckload of money well duck to naples makes a truckload of money no matter what he does duck to naples can make a truckload of money handing out hundred dollar bills on a sidewalk and he would still end up making a buttload of money from that <laughs> i don't know how he does it but he does it. Uh, Jeff Potts says, uh, "Yes, there are a lot of scamming in the NFT, NFT realm. Lots of people not, lots of people got stung and lost their crypto." Yeah, I heard that. Um, yeah, I, I heard that uh, Matthew Weldon got ripped off somehow via crypto, and I felt like really bad. I mean, I, ah, because he's he's such a nice guy, and that, that may that may be kind of mad. I don't, I don't like that. Vic says, you got to think, normal people don't buy NFTs, crypto, do. You just have to find something that half interests you and NFT it. Yeah. Um, I'll NFT these drawings. How about that? <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. Um, but, um, yeah. We shall see. We shall see. We shall see. Comic Express says, not Matty Ice. No. Yes, Matty Ice. Oh my gosh, Alpha Proto here. Alpha Proto. Your voiceover. We just listened to uh your 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 sample chapter for uh for Jeff Potts. That voiceover was fantastic. I don't understand why. Why are you not doing voiceovers for every crowdfunded comic book on Indiegogo and Kickstarter combined? Because um, it's it's phenomenal, phenomenal work. Seriously, really, really well done. If uh, if I do another comic book, I am definitely going to recommend that you do the voiceover for the for the uh, video. <laughs> I recommend everybody <laughs> contact uh, Alpha Proto <laughs> and ask him to uh, offer to pay him to uh, do the voiceover for your stuff. Very cool. What do you do? What do you do for a living, Alpha Proto? Do you, I mean, do you do do you act? Do you uh, do radio or, or or something? Or is this just you just do this for fun and uh, you just happen to have a uh, golden pipes? <laughs> Uh, 
Um, Alpha Rose says, oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Vic says, Alpha Proto, you know the black camera. I was just letting everyone know. You were just letting everyone know what? That, that you did voiceovers? Um, Vic says, you could NFT it with the guy's permission. With the guy's permission, you could... What? The, the what? Uh, s- sketches of people's faces? I don't know. Do you... I don't know. I mean, do you need people's permission if they're famous? Do you need their permission to uh, to sell drawings of them? I don't know. I always have to find out. If someone's a public figure, do you need permission to, to sell a drawing of them? I don't think you do, but maybe you do. Maybe you do, and I'm just not aware of it, which is very possible. All right, it's 12.37. I started at 10. It's been about two and a half hours. Still working on it. Let me see. I'm just uh, standing up again, checking general proportions. Because as I get into it, it starts to tighten up. Then I start to see things that need... Correcting. That's right. That is right. And that's this is that's right. Let's see. Alpha Proto says, I am a sprite animator at the moment. I voice act when I can. I'm in a few games. I audition all the time. I just don't get hired. That's surprising. Um, keep on, seriously, keep at it because you're, you have, you're really good at, at voice acting. At least at, uh, you know, at least you're, you're great at um, audiobook reading. So maybe that's another app. I mean, I'm sure you're already looking into it, but you're really good at audiobook reading. Um, Jeff Potts says, I will say, I was poking around the other day on ASX. I don't know what that is. Uh, just wondering about how much it would cost to do an audiobook. I imagine it, it's just like making a PDF. I mean, you just... I mean, the cost of making an audiobook would be, I imagine, hiring the reader. <laughs> um, the actual putting, I mean, once you have the, the, the tape, once you have the recording, then, you know, you just, you just put it together in, what, into M, 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 MP4, MP3 format or whatever, whatever format uh, an audiobook is in. Um, so... Alpha Pro says, I own Darksiders. I, I just haven't played it. I bought it to support Joe Mad's art. Okay, got it. Alpha Pro did a better job in voice, voiceover work than two-thirds of the voice professionals whose samples I heard. Yeah, no, he. I, that's what I'm saying. Is he did an excellent excellent job. That That's another reason why I didn't want to say anything when, when I was playing it. I just wanted I just wanted to listen to it, you know, and hear. When I listen to audiobooks, I get, I get a picture of my brain like everyone else, and so I didn't want to interrupt that. I didn't want to interrupt the movie that was playing in my skull as I was as I was listening. Um, <laughs> Nick says I think Story Rage would be a better voice actor or comic book cut. <laughs> that might be true. I'm kidding. Um, Alpha Pro says yeah, I've never tried audiobook reading until I heard how much money you can make. Jeff Jeff just happened to be to need a reader when I was setting up a demo for book reading. Oh well. Looks like you won't need that demo anymore because you just made one. <laughs> you just made a 15-minute demo. And it was very good. So I would definitely use that as, as, as part of your demo reel to get work. It was quite convincing. Ah. Oh, yeah, I forgot. 
it stopped playing my music. Our pro says, yeah, pretty much. It was fun to read. I really want to know what happens next. Yeah, me too. That shows how how good the writing was and how successful your reading was because I actually want to find out what happens next. So good job to both of you. Jeff Posh, do you have more samples of your stuff on your YouTube channel? More samples of your of your reading or your voiceover work? Um, yeah, for people to listen to. Because seriously, I mean, they would be really interested in, uh, uh, you know, sort of asking you for assistance with their stuff. I, I would imagine. I'm gonna I mean, when I'm done with this, I'm gonna post a link to Jeff Potts. Uh, uh, audio book, you know, sample, you're reading. I'm going to post a link to it on uh, Facebook and uh, and Twitter. And I think everyone should. Everybody go promote th these guys. Promote, uh, send, out, send out the uh, the link to that uh, to that reading that, that I played earlier. And uh, let people know about Jeff Potts' book and, and Alpha Proto's reading of it this that sample chapter because i i, I think uh, they both deserve to have a lot more recognition than, than uh they would otherwise get jeff Post says i don't have any more samples yet I'm working on it i will be getting i will be writing some background short stories that i intend on having narrated cool um let's see Dory Me Calm Blog says immediately had to jump on to see Olivia Wilde being drawn. Okay, cool. I'm glad you're here. If you haven't already, please subscribe. <laughs> Hit the bell for notifications of future videos and give the live stream a thumbs up if you would. Thumb it up. Greatly appreciate it. Vic says that looks like Siege if you pick her forehead up more. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Yeah, I guess it kind of does look like Siege. Yeah, kind of. Siege is pretty attractive. Ah, the Dore Me Calm blog has been here before. But it's been a while. He says tons of business travel. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. And hope you hope to see you around more often. Alpha Pro says I asked about adding sound effects, but the descriptions are so good your mind adds it as you listen to it. Yeah, true. Make this the Olivia Wilde channel. <laughs> Thank you. 
Dorian Mekong's blog says, and I am subscribed. Awesome. Thank you. Rick says, you know what? If you got Edwin to read it on his channel and Erotimus was drawing along, he could trick them into making him an audio book with, <laughs> with a recording. <laughs> with an illustrated comic, yeah. Hey, Dorian Mekong, you take care. I know, yeah, I'm on the East Coast too. I'm, I'm, I'm foolishly staying up though. Um, but yeah, you have a great night. Thanks for showing up. Good seeing you again, and hope to see you later. Take care. Thank <laughs> you. 
Fix this. OMG, dude, I'm on OpenSea and all I see is scam from an artist's perspective. Yeah, I think that was, uh, I think that was uh, Mike's whole contention. You know, there's a lot of bad art being sold as NFTs, and so he wanted to provide actual good art that would be of value. So, um, I think that was his whole, the whole idea behind his uh, funky monkey frat house thing and getting, you know, guys like Siege and Zach and Kevin and uh, Gary involved, get some good artists on there and sell NFTs with, with good art, actual good art. Ooh, 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 ooh. See, Siege is not a guy, <laughs> Alpha Proto. Siege is a girl. Um, Vic says OpenSea is the NFT site. My sketchbook says I left and just got back. What you talking about? Um, I guess NFTs now. <laughs> we also listened to uh, we listened to Jeff Potts' story, um, a sample chapter from his book, read by Alpha Proto, and it, it was fantastic. Really, really pro work by both of them. So uh, if you have a chance, go back later on on the stream and uh, you can listen to listen to it. Um, so I encourage everybody to go back and listen to it. Actually, go to, you should go to the to his site on YouTube and listen to it. That way he gets he gets the clicks and the views. <laughs> 
Jeff Five confirms that Siege is a girl. Oh my gosh, Vic. My sketchbook says problem is NFTs based in art or from an artist are starting to not sell as high, so collectors won't be looking to pick them up. Apple <laughs> Rose says, okay, I was about to do some self reflection. <laughs> okay, the question is manhood. <laughs> Why do I find this guy so attractive? Um, Because that guy's a girl. <laughs> oh boy. Vic's ragging on people. Ragging on Zach Bradley. You leave Zach Bradley alone, Vic. My sketchbook says the functional NFTs are, are the big thing. I don't know what functional NFTs are. How are NFTs functional? Plus, the major companies are getting into NFT games like uh, into the NFT game like Konami with uh, Castlevania. I would like a duck painting, not NFT though. I agree. I prefer physical stuff to digital. Can't beat the real thing, says Alpha Proto. Kind. Of isn't smart. Why sell a video game item to one person for a hundred thousand instead of to everyone for five bucks? True. My sketchbook says, uh, "Yeah, I was watching another stream about gamers being mad that at developers for jumping into the NFT market if it's ludicrous, if it's lucrative, companies will invest." True. Yeah, says Vic. Doug's NFT simple doodles look great as a painting on a wall. Yep, 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 pop art. Uh, my sketchbook says, Jason, we need a GoFundMe for a 4K stream set up, my dude, if you're going to be streaming art like this. <laughs> Seriously. Problem is, is that I am uh, I'm on StreamYard, and uh, I'm using the free setup, free uh, monthly setup for StreamYard, and so it's only 70, 720 
unfortunately. So it's a uh, kind of kind of potatoey, I guess. Um, if I if I use o what's it called? Not o OCS. It's, what was it called? Hold on. If I use the other video thing. Uh, if I use OBS, if I use OBS, then my camera will come in at 1040p. So, and I may have to, I may, I'll probably end up having to do that because I'm coming close to 20 hours already. It's only the 9th of, uh, of January. I'm already used up more than half of my designated free hours. So, you know, probably by next week, you'll be seeing these videos in, in 10, 1080p just because I have to. And I was stupid because I could have gotten a year of stream StreamYard for $10 a month, but I didn't sign up because I didn't think that I would be using it that often. <laughs> Until I decided to do this, these live streams, um, you know, for these for these drawings. Now I'm kicking myself. Like I wish I had signed up when I had a chance. Stupid, stupid, stupid. But live and learn. It's like I don't want to. I don't want to waste ten dollars a month if I'm not going to use it. It's like now I wish I had. <laughs> wasted ten dollars a month people should donate you at least ten dollars a month <laughs> you're all well more than welcome to donate ten dollars to me via my <laughs> my tip jar down below or penny or whatever or nothing at all uh, if you go on to, down in the description that's where my tip jar is you can click it and if you if you like you may send me a tip and I will put it towards getting a stream yard <laughs> subscription um, if I get enough tip money and maybe some better equipment but this, this equipment's okay. I mean, it's, it's, it is filming at, it is recording or filming at a 10, 1080p, the camera is. It just, it's just not coming through because of the limitations placed on, placed on StreamYard's uh, free accounts. I don't like the duck watermark on StreamYard's. <laughs> Yeah, that logo is pretty lame. I think that that might be part of the uh, part of their plan. They don't want a cool looking logo. They want a lame, goofy looking logo, logo so that so that you'll want to uh, get rid of it by buying a subscription. So I think it's part of their master plan, part of their evil plan, not to make the free the free trials having them look kind of kind of dopey. Are you streaming from a laptop or a desktop PC? Uh, this, this is a desk, desktop. I mean, this is a camera here. That That's a camera, but it's connected to my desktop computer. So. And, and more than anything else, I, I think it's, it would be the, the internet connection that would be a bigger issue than the computer. My connection is is pretty good. It's 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 not bad. It just hiccups every once in a while, and then I get lost, and then I, I lose the signal. With or without a graphics card? Yeah, I have a graphics card. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I wouldn't be able to see anything if I didn't have a graphics card. But my computer is uh. How old is my computer? What year is this? It's about it's about twelve years old, so <laughs> it's not it's not the newest, but it's pretty good. I mean, it's uh, it's got a it's 
got I think 32 gigs of RAM. That's 32 gigs of RAM. So it's like a, it's like a, it's a Mac Tower, a, a, a Mac, a Mac Pro, one of those cheese grater Macs. Oh, my sketchbook says when I'm on stream with Rick the Canadian, internet drops or bugs out. Yeah, yeah. Well, Rick lives up in the, up in the uh, frozen wasteland frozen tundra you know so he barely gets electricity period so asking for great internet from rick's cabin is uh might be asking a little too much from him rick says really dude the plan should be you and john diller dedicate three days out of the week into coming up with an nft property and give me give me one for every one you make <laughs> <laughs> Clever. My sketchbook says no, you can stream with integrated graphics on your CPU. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I know a little about about computers, but I that that was that was that was a foreign language to me. Uh, my sketchbook says ah, it's a Mac Pro. I might not have. A GPU depends on whether or not depends if not it can be a small GPU I don't know I'd have to crack it open let's see it is one o'clock I started this at nine o'clock so it's been three hours however we did listen to, to uh jeff potts awesome book chapter read by alpha proto for about 15 minutes so uh that gives us a, a little grace time however i'm not going to get this done tonight i will continue working on it and then i will post it on the interwebs, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, sometime next week, or is it this week? It's this week now, it's Sunday, where I am anyway. I'll post it this week on social media after I finish it off camera. And you guys can see just how badly I butchered poor Olivia Wilde's portrait. Um, but I wanna thank everybody for hanging out with me tonight. It was, it was a great stream, actually, because we got a lot of people. We still have five people here. I mean, usually with my streams, we get five people max, and then it, like, you know, halfway through it, when it goes down to, like, maybe two, sometimes one, sometimes no one. But there's five people here who are actually sitting around watching me <laughs> draw that's awesome at, at one o'clock in the morning thank you very much everybody um i want to thank vic for suggesting that we play um alpha proto's reading of jeff potts chapter tonight very good idea probably the best idea of the evening and i want to thank jeff potts and alpha proto for the fantastic job they did with that uh with that chapter great writing great reading and i really encourage Alpha Proto to look into seriously promoting yourself, doing narration for for these uh, crowdfunded videos, um, comic books and stuff with Comicsgate or whoever, whoever, because you're really good. And uh, also with the uh, sort of audiobook thing in general, keep at it. Seriously, good job, Jeff Potts. Thank you very much. You had great story i really look forward to uh when that when your whole book comes out you said it's coming out in march again as you have information to provide to people on where to get the book please feel free to post the information uh during my live streams um i'm sure everybody would love to hear or sorry read or hear if you have an audiobook version the rest of it it, it just was a really great job so um let's see what else what else what else um 
pop it up, pop, 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 pop. Talking about NFTs. Um, my sketchbook says, are you eating hard candy, Jason? Yes, I was eating these lifesavers to help keep me focused, keep my energy up. I'm living off of lifesavers. Um, sorry, I was smacking in the camera as I was uh, enjoying them. <laughs> Vic says, I'm not creative at all at all can just do portraits that's that's creative and jeff Potts says one doom rabbit does portraits and he's doing nft customs for mike miller cool 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 uh yeah I'll, one doom rabbit is another phenomenal artist really fast really good i mean he's so skilled and jeff Potts says no problem jason Alf proto is waving very nicely okay i will wave as well Everybody, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Please make sure to hit the like button. Please give this live stream a thumbs up if you would. And make sure to hit the bell for notifications of future videos. In addition, make sure to subscribe to Jeff Potts, Alpha Proto, and Gary Shipman. Check out their channels. Give their stuff some love, some attention. And uh, I will see you guys either Monday or Tuesday. I'm going to do three new drawings in the next week. And so it'll be, I'll start either, it'll pro probably be Tuesday because uh, Monday I got have some meetings. But uh, so, ch yeah, again, subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the bell. And then you'll be notified next time I'm on. And then you can. Hang out with me for another two or three hours, and I'll babble and ramble on for a while. Anyway, you guys have a great night. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. You guys take care. Bye.